you know, but that, I mean, look, for what it is, okay. Yeah. But should the songs have been longer so you're not, like, getting into the groove? And then you're like, oh, what? What? The song's over? You know? Like, I, I, I agree with you there. Yeah. And, I mean, there's no reason. Well, they had to record remotely, so there is a reason. I take that back. But what I was going to say is, like, in this day and age, you know, everyone has home recording studios. Yeah. You, you can get a decent sound out there. Totally. So. You know, it's kind of like a, a ru- you know, this is like a rush release. Yeah, but Dave, you, you know what this sounds like to me? Have you ever gone on iTunes and a new album comes out and you want to listen to it a little bit so you can play each song, but you only get a snippet of the song? Right. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I swear to God. It sounds, no, no, you're right. It sounds you're right. like. I, I agree yeah, with you. Yeah. I, I agree with you. You know, and we had said that during the year. It's kind of like, why didn't you guys record the whole song? I mean, I don't know, maybe like, you know, recording remotely is, and, and getting everyone coordinated right. is a huge pain in the butt. Right, but, so, right. look, we're only going to do two minutes of this because... Right, but but let's be honest. Everybody knows social media, right? On social media, they always tell you, you know, quick and to the point, like, you don't want to let it drag on for four or five minutes. I get that. I understand that concept because that's social media. Hey, it's Sammy. Hey, there are guys. Hey, we're going to, it's a little clip, a little taste. But if you're going to put out an album that exists on Spotify or iTunes or on someone's CD and you're going to have it like for in a collection, how do you not say, you know what? Let's, you know, let's do a run through. I mean, it doesn't take that much. They're already recording the goddamn thing. You know, you're already making the effort to set it up to do it. Just, first of all, finish the fucking song. Second of all, like, get the balance right. I mean, what does it take? You get an engineer in there? I mean, it's ridiculous. For Christ's sake, Mikey's not properly mic'd, and it's insane. And Sammy's usually a perfectionist about this shit. He's not a sloppy guy when it comes to recording. Well, I don't know about that. Well, yeah, I would I would not describe Sammy as perfectionist. I didn't say he's a perfectionist, but he's always had clear, concise vocals. I've never heard a bad sounding Sam album on the vocals where you can't, you know, properly hear the background vocals or the balance with the guitar. I mean, I don't know. I, I was very you, you know what this this was four guys recording at home. And that's what this is. But there's so many people out there, Dave, that are making full albums from home. I hear you. Well, you know, Sam, as we've said in the past, Sam can be lazy. Oh, we know that. Sam can be lazy. But my whole thing is like, if you're going to actually do it, if you're going to commit to, hey, we're going to put out an album on January 9th of these songs, like, you got to kind of put a little bit of effort in. I mean, it's not like he's writing any of these songs. Just fucking record it and give it to an engineer to clean up so it sounds right. And, and and finish the fucking song. All I ask is two things. Number one, finish the songs. Don't don't give me snippets of the song. Do the song. Do the song. Do it the way you do it. It's fine the way you're doing it. You sound great, but finish the fucking song. Number one. Number two, give it to an engineer to at least balance everybody properly. I mean, it doesn't take much. My fucking kids could do that. And they do. I can't believe that they let that come out like that. I'm shocked. Well, I mean, even what record label is he on these days? I mean, it's like some label I never heard. Oh, of. I know. It's like, you know, my, my grandmother's uh, butcher's asshole. I, I have no idea. But it's like, <laughs> it, it's, it's like sailboat records or something. It's like laughable. But at the same time. You know, Sam's got enough cashish that he could, like, you know, throw uh, an engineer for a few days in the studio. I mean, it doesn't take much. Well, that's the thing. It's not like he can't afford it. If you're already getting the guys on their instruments learning the song, what does it take to finish a song? I mean, what does it take to finish a song? I mean, another two minutes per song to finish the fucking song? Dave, I got to be honest with you. I was in shock. When I played this album, I did not expect that at all. I thought it was going to be exactly what it was, but at least having a quality balanced sound and the songs to their fullest. Have you ever heard of a band releasing an album with snippets of songs? I have never heard of this in my life. Doing covers, snippets of covers. I've just never heard. Find me a band. That is an album of snippets. 
It's disgusting. Do punk bands count? Because their songs are two minutes long and then they're over. But wait a second, though. But at least that's a whole song. The punk songs are known to be two minutes. I mean, for Christ's sake, they reduced Won't Get Fooled Again to like two minutes long. Won't Get Fooled Again is like, I don't even know how long, like six, seven, eight minutes. I mean, and you don't have to do the whole keyboard solo and everything. I understand that. You want to edit it down, that's fine. But like, I mean, they're just getting going. And I wouldn't mind because I actually like the way they sound. But it's like, it's like, wow, they say, they're like, you just like, whole lot of Rosie. Like, they're just getting going and they're getting into it. It's like, all right. And then it's, it's over. Same thing with Good Enough, one of your favorite songs. They get right into it and good enough to, and that's the end of the song. And I'm like, oh my God. I, I literally want to call up Sam's manager and be like, how did you let this get out? It's a it, cash grab. That's and, how. Yeah. And I'm curious to see if Eddie Trunk says anything because that's his buddy, Sam. And he, I'm sure he's not going to say a word about it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, more on Sam. Believe it or not, like he did on his birthday, Dave. Sam the Ham couldn't help himself from playing at Cabo Wabo in Mexico on New Year's Eve. So after everybody had dinner there, and, you know, they space out the tables and people wear the masks and they do all the COVID things. After dinner, the Red Rocker played acoustically. He showed up and he put a little clip of Little White Lie on Instagram. And he says, we were allowed to have 50% table capacity with social distancing and masks. We did the best we could. People can still have fun even under these circumstances. So Sammy will do what Sammy will do. And he goes out and he's still performing, Dave. What do you think of that? God bless the guy. Oh, he don't stop. He's got a raging red heart on that guy. So here we go on to Sammy Doesn't Stop. He also made a appearance on Nancy Wilson's solo debut. So Nancy Wilson from Heart, the guitarist, she was formerly married to Cameron Crowe, and she is making her solo debut. And Sammy will make a guest appearance on Nancy Wilson's album, You and Me. Coming out in February or March, the song Sam is on is a cover of Simon and Garfunkel's The Boxer. Also guesting on the album is Duff McKagan of Guns N' Roses and Taylor Hawkins of the Foo Fighters. Now, do you think Sammy does the Garfunkel part or the Simon part? Oh, maybe because he's got the blonde a, curls. That, do the Garfunkel that's a part. tough call. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Now, moving on, Dave, to Valerie Bertinelli. So Valerie Bertinelli appeared on the Today Show. And she was promoting one of her food things, and then, you know, she was talking to the people on Today Show who she's familiar with because she's worked with them, and she got kind of teary when asked about Ed. She said, I don't know why I'm tearing up, but when I hear your voices and see you people, I feel a connection with you guys always make me tear up. It's been rough, very bittersweet. So we're doing okay. Wolfie and I spent the holidays together, and I will see him later today. We've been spending a lot of time together. Said it's hard. Talk about it. missing Eddie. I've gone to text him a few dozen times, and I was like, oh, I can't text him right now. And then she thanked Carson Daly for his interview that he did with Wolf, and she said, it really touched my heart. You handled him, and you were so good to him, and I just want to say as a mom, thank you very much. And says, it doesn't seem like the pain is ever really going to go away. You just kind of figure out how to carry it a little bit better. So what did you make of that whole thing, Dave? Yeah, that was pretty interesting. I, I don't think I have anything to add other than what you said, honestly. So Yeah, it was interesting. She got very upset, that's for sure. She defends, you know, Wolf vigorously right, well, all the that's time, every time. Son, so, you know, it's understandable. You know, she's like the mama bear. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah, of course. Now, did you see this clip, Dave? That came out of Van Halen from the November party from 1974, this backyard Pasadena party, Dave. Greg Renoff, I guess, tipped it off on Twitter, our buddy Greg. And this was when the Los Angeles County Sheriff Police officers, they came in in riot gear and, and trotted down uh, Pasadena's Madre Street when Van Halen was playing blasted music. Apparently there was a police helicopter that circled over the house and there was spotlighting down on the party and the pilot's voice was booming through the chopper's loudspeaker. Attention, this is an unlawful assembly. Disperse. Failure to do so will result in your immediate arrest. Commander evaluated the situation from the curb and they had drunken and stone kids filled out from the front and backyards and they said there was something like 1,500 people on the property. In this video, it's really rough. It's old as hell and it's so 
blurry, right, David? It, but it is interesting to see. What did you make of this? That was fascinating. Right? I think that is the earliest known clip oh, yeah. of Van Halen as the band. Now, admittedly, you know, they're doing a nighttime concert, so yeah. it's pretty dark, literally. Right. It's pretty dark, so it's tough to see. But it's fascinating as a fan to see early Van Halen play. Yep. And it's silent. You don't get to actually right. hear anything. Right. But then the next thing you see the cops all lined up outside, <laughs> breaking up the party. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's very true. Very true. But the silence kind of makes it dramatic in a way, you know, and it also makes it like, like so interesting. And you try to put everything together and, you know, you've heard about this party for years and you read about it in Greg's book and Van Halen Rising and to actually have this archival footage is crappy and as scrappy as it is. It's so amazing. And it just goes to show you that stuff is out there. It is out there. So yep. let me tell yep. you something. Just got to dig it up. And let's let's it think up. about the clips that have come out. That unreleased MTV clip from 5150, gold. That Jason Becker video, gold. Van Halen opening for Black Sabbath, all these little pieces of incredible video are coming out of the woodwork. This is what we have to look forward to. Everybody's always concerned about the 5150 tapes and what's going to happen. We cannot wait on that stuff. Don't worry about that. If it comes out, great. If it doesn't, who knows? I don't know if it'll ever come out, to be honest with you. However, one thing we can count on and the one thing we can look forward to is the unreleased stuff from the fans. If you guys have stuff, let it out. And we're no one selling anything. It's not about money. This is about us appreciating the band, enjoying this stuff. These are little pieces of gold. And this is the kind of stuff that's going to keep the band's legacy going and keep us talking and keep us enjoying. That kind of stuff is the stuff we have been missing for years and the stuff we want to see. So I really believe this stuff is out there. Now, that's for sure. So with that, I want to also mention that Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. pulled a Van Halen-inspired New Year's Day social media post stunt with him in a white sweatsuit, David. He's dancing in a pool of muddy water, high-kicking to the sounds of jump on Instagram. And the caption reads, Who else is ready to hashtag jump in to 2021? And I think the significance here with the white suit and the, is sort of a clean slate and jump is a huge enthusiastic song. And he jumps into a pool of mud, which represents our society right now. And, uh, you know, RDJ has always been a big Van Halen fan. So what did you think of this, Dave? I thought he was just doing something goofy to bring in the new year. <laughs> okay. I'm getting all analytical about it. Right yeah, no, I, th <laughs> I think that's it. I think he just wanted to do something fun. And, you know, he loves Van Halen, so that was the uh, shirt he was wearing that day. Okay, okay. Also, another tribute to Eddie Van Halen. The Van Halen tribute band DOA did a nice tribute to Eddie by featuring Brian Young. B. Young, as he is known by David Lee Roth. He was David Lee Roth's guitarist many years ago, and we had him on. He was a podcast guest, and what an incredible guitarist Brian is. He is tremendous. And when I tell you, I would say of all Dave's guitarists that he has had, Brian probably represented the Eddie Van Halen guitar licks and notes most faithfully. I mean, he was really studied the living hell out of it. So he got together with bassist Frederico Zuin, uh, drummer Pablo Sanchez, who was in Argentina, and the bassist was also in Argentina, the singer Brian Geller from Hollywood, California, guitarist Brian Young was in Texas, and they all did sort of a Zoom virtual performance of the song DOA, and here's a clip. We were 